Hello, my name is Mrs. Bartholomew Tetley Jones, and I am here to present to you a fantastic experience the reading and performance of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, brought to you by Riverside Unified School District's Visual and Performing Arts Department. Enjoy. Chapter 3 A Caucus Race and a Long Tail. They were indeed a queer looking party that assembled on the bank. The birds with draggled feathers, the animals with their fur clinging close to them, and all dripping wet, cross, and uncomfortable. The first question, of course, was how to get dry again. They had a consultation about this, and after a few minutes, it seemed quite natural to Alice to find herself talking familiarly with them as if she had known them all her life. Indeed, she had a long argument with the lorry, who at last turned sulky and would only say, I am older than you and must know better. And this Alice would not allow without knowing how old it was. And as the lorry positively refused to tell its age, there was no more to be said. At last the mouse, who seemed to be a person of some authority among them, called out, Sit down, all of you, and listen to me. I will soon make you dry enough. They all sat down at once in a large ring with the mouse in the middle. Alice kept her eyes anxiously fixed on it, for she felt sure she would catch a bad cold if she did not get dry very soon. Ahem, said the mouse with an important air. Are you all ready? This is the driest thing I know. Silence, all around if you please. William the Conqueror, whose cause was favoured by the Pope, was soon submitted to by the English, who wanted leaders, and had been of late much accustomed to usurpation and conquest. Edward and Morker, the Earls of Mercia and Northumbria. Ugh, said the lorry with a shiver. I beg your pardon, said the mouse, frowning, but very politely. Did you speak? Not I, said the lorry hastily. I thought you did, said the mouse. I proceed. Edward and Morker, the Earls of Mercia and Northumbria, declared for him, and even Stinged, the patriotic Archbishop of Canterbury, found it advisable. Found what? said the duck. Found it, the mouse replied rather crossly. Of course you know what it means. I know what it means well enough when I find a thing, said the duck. It's generally a frog or a worm. The question is, what did the Archbishop find? The mouse did not notice this question, but hurriedly went on. Found it advisable to go with Edgar Eathling to meet William and offer him the crown. William's conduct at first was moderate, but the insolence of his Normans... How are you getting on now, my dear? continued, turning to Alice as it spoke. As wet as ever, said Alice in a melancholy tone. It doesn't seem to dry me at all. In that case, said the dodo solemnly, rising to its feet, I move that the meeting adjourn for the immediate adoption of more energetic remedies. Speak English, said the eaglet. I don't know the meaning of half those long words, and what's more, I don't believe you do either. And the eaglet bent down his head to hide a smile. Some of the other birds tittered audibly. What I was going to say, said the dodo in an offended tone, was that the best thing to get us dry would be a caucus race. What is a caucus race, said Alice, not that she wanted much to know, but the dodo had paused as if it thought somebody ought to speak, and no one else seemed inclined to say anything. Why, said the dodo, the best way to explain it is to do it. And as you might like to try the thing yourself some winter day, I will tell you how the dodo managed it. First it marked out a race course in a sort of circle. The exact shape doesn't matter, it said. And then all the party were placed along the course here and there. There was no one, two, three away, but they began running when they liked and left off when they liked, so it was not easy to know when the race was over. 
However, when they had been running half an hour or so, and they were quite dry again, the dodo suddenly called out, The race is over! And they all crowded round it, panting and asking, But who has won? The question the dodo could not answer without a great deal of thought, and it sat for a long time with one finger pressed upon its forehead, the position in which you usually see Shakespeare in the pictures of him, while the rest waited in silence. At last the dodo said, Everybody has won, and all must have prizes. But who is to give the prizes? Quite a chorus of voices asked. Why, she, of course, said the dodo, pointing to Alice with one finger, and the whole party at once crowded round her, calling out in a confused way, Prizes! Prizes! Alice had no idea what to do, and in despair she put her hand into her pocket and pulled out a box of comfits. Luckily the salt water had not gotten into it, and handed them round as prizes. There was actually one apiece, all around. But she must have a prize herself, you know, said the mouse. Of course! said the dodo very gravely. What else have you got in your pocket? He went on, turning to Alice. Only a thimble, said Alice sadly. Hand it over here, said the dodo. Then they all crowded round her once more, while the dodo solemnly presented the thimble, saying, We beg your acceptance of this elegant thimble. And when it had finished this short speech, they all cheered.